Hello and welcome to another video. Today we are highlighting this stamp set called Cute Fruit um, and I thought that this one was just super sweet. Huh, no pun intended, right? Um, but I thought that today we would kind of continue our um, play with uh, note cards and I thought what better way to play with that than to create a set of note cards that you could gift to a friend. And I thought that this stamp set would be perfect for that. So um, a couple things to note first. So in the, not the full catalog, this stamp set's actually found in this more beginner's catalog. Um, so if you go through it, if you'd like a copy, feel free to let me know. But it actually has these like simple projects that they recommend uh, for people who are kind of starting out and wanting to get comfortable. So this is actually on page seven, and you'll see there's lots of different suggestions of things, recommended items to pick up if you wanna make these projects. Um, and the one thing I will note here is that one of the things you can actually get is an assortment of stamp and ink spots. So this is an example of one of these. This is in Misty Moonlight, one of the new ink colors. And it's just this lovely little um, stamp set, or this stamp uh, ink pad. It's just this mini version of the ink the, of the larger version of it and so this still can be re-inked with a re-inker it can still be used to ink up large inks uh, large stamps it just takes a little bit of time to you know make sure you've got all those spots covered so this particular set um, of eight comes in in um, those all of these colors so you've got granny apple green daffodil delight real red shaded spruce coastal cabana gorgeous grape basic gray and flirty flamingo and so today for today's card I thought that we would use um, the watermelon and uh, the rind for the watermelon as well as this sentiment here wishing you a slice of happiness so um, for the suggested designs in the actual little catalog, um, for a couple of them, they've actually used the basic gray for the sentiment. Um, and I thought, you know what? I will do that for this card. So uh, in that case, we need only three of the colors. We'll need the real red for the watermelon itself, shaded spruce for the rind, and basic gray for the sentiment. So I'll show you what the other cards I made with the stamp set are that I would bundle up together. So first things first, um, I have already handy my note card and where did I put my envelope? I put it off to the side. Look at that. All right. So, uh, and my envelope. So for that now, um, I've already mounted my blocks for uh, stamping. You could have absolutely put them on opposite ends, it, like on the same block if you wanted to stamp a little bit faster. Uh, but since I have the blocks, I figured I would use them. So uh, let's go ahead. For this one, I thought for my card, I would need to... And here, see, I was already creating a little bit. So here again is my stamping pierce mat. This is perfect for stamping with photopolymer stamps because as this um, stamp set doesn't really have any cushion to it, this helps provide the cushion to make sure that your stamping is going to be really nice. So for this card, let's go ahead. I thought I would put a centralized watermelon slice here. I'd put the sentiment above it, and then in the empty space, I'd put like partial stamped images of watermelons. So we'll see how that comes out. Um, for this little bundle of cards, I have intentionally made it where uh, my cards are all different. I did not want to have a, a repeats of, color, of uh, cards. I did have a card though that had a watermelon in it, um, so that part's not new. So there's that one. Let's open up the shaded spruce. There you go. And then just gently. Um, and then this one's not actually meant to be kind of flush to it. You just kind of line it up as best you can. And it's meant to have kind of that space between them. So notice even if I would pushed it up a little bit, it would not have filled in that space. So while we're at it, let's add the sentiment so that we know how much space that's going to take. And then, so that's just in our basic gray. For my other cards, I've actually used uh, Memento ink, uh, but I think that's 
still going to look lovely. There we go. So now in this empty space here all around it, I'm actually done with the basic gray. So let's go ahead and put that away. And then, so now I'm going to just go around and add in more slices of watermelon. I thought that that would go really well with this sentiment. And because I kind of want to finish up one color and then I can put it away before I inevitably get myself um, with the ink, I figured I'll stamp those all now. And there's no rhyme or reason here. I'm just kind of haphazardly stamping it around. I do want to make sure I don't get it too close, right? Because I do still have to add the rind. Hey, all right. One last one here. Let's do, what, a steep angle? Yeah. Let's try a steep angle. There we go. So now I'm all done with that one. And let's actually get off the extra ink here. Um, note that your reds and sometimes some deep purples are going to stain your ink pad. So I do recommend that you try to clean it immediately. I use um, one of the cases that we actually have as a holder for my stamping chamois. This is one of the things that you can actually use to clean your stamps. I'm seeing I accidentally got it into the shaded spruce, but it cleans right up. Um, so your uh, stamping chamois, no matter how stained it is, it is still quite capable of cleaning off the ink so that if I was to stamp again, say in this corner here where there's white, there's, um, you know, you're not going to leave that residue behind of that ink. Okay. Um, so, and actually let's do the same with my sentiment here while I'm cleaning out my stamps. All right. So now let's add the rinds to those uh, added slices here. So again, it really isn't going to be perfect. You could move your head above it if you want. See, so notice that one, it's a little bit closer and that's okay. Go ahead and do that for this one. And notice here, I kind of rocked my block a little bit and so now there's ink in the corner. So you do wanna make sure, I'm, I'm trying to go too fast apparently, I gotta slow it down. Do the same thing here and then one more. And if you felt like the shaded spruce was a little too dark, you could absolutely have used that granny apple green instead. So let's close that ink pad up before mishaps happen. And then just like the others, stamp off the extra ink and then use my stamping chamois. You definitely don't need to stamp off the extra ink if you don't want to, uh, but it does make your chamois not get quite as dirty and needing of cleaning beforehand. And if you do wish to clean it, all you do, run it under uh, tap water in the sink until the water runs clear. So like I said, it will stain, but it will still be perfectly good to clean your stamps. So, oh, see, and I was too eager. I was going to leave my card with a naked envelope. Let's fix that. So I'll just have to re-clean them and that's okay. So let's go ahead, let's stamp one more watermelon slice for this. I think that'll be lovely. There we go, nice and inked up. Let's tilt it a little bit. There we go. And then put that off to the side. Ink, ink, ink. Wipe, wipe, wipe. And then add our pind. And then we can just take these right off the block afterwards and put them away. Ooh. Okay. And lined up. Hey, that was that might be my best one yet. Okay. So let's go ahead and clean that one off real quick. Perfect. Okay, so now let me show you the other ones I created. Uh, this is a really fun little set again. So the first one we just made together, wishing you a slice of happiness. Lots of beautiful little watermelons with the corresponding not naked envelope. Let's move this out of the way. Um, I also, the first one I created was actually this one. One of the nice sentiments they have is the you're one in a melon. And I thought, oh, that would be fun. So I put watermelons everywhere, but I didn't like all this empty space. So I still added in some of the other things. Made this look like a kiwi. That looked like grapefruit. Um, then I thought I would play around with the, um, this set has these cute little faces. And so I thought I would add to that. And I made this card. 
where you have these little smiling bananas. And I thought that was just adorable. I didn't put a smile on the banana on the outside. I thought that would kind of keep that as a surprise for the inside. And then finally, I kept it really simple for the last one with the pineapple. And I just had a single pineapple on it with the sentiment below here. Um, nice and simple, but essentially gets the point across, right? I couldn't ask for a sweeter friend. So. Uh, that being said, for packaging this, you could absolutely put this in a um, one of our acetate boxes that we carry. Um, they would be a little bit small for the actual set. We have, um, uh, what's the word? That they are meant for our full size cards. So these would be a little bit small, but you could absolutely grab a piece of ribbon and tie it around. Uh, you may even, depending on how thick these are, these might even be postable. You might even be able to like send it through the post to a friend. So uh, that being said, if you've got any questions or need any of the materials, they're linked below in the description uh, with the list of all the materials, a link to my blog if you need them. Feel free to subscribe if you wish to see more of these come up in your YouTube feed. Uh, videos for inspiration and if you have any questions please make sure to either leave a comment or contact me via my blog uh, so that I might be able to answer them. If you do wish to purchase any of these items please use this host code unless it's over $150 in which case obviously you'll get your own host rewards um, which allows you to earn free product. So if you've got anything I need to clarify, please go ahead and let me know. Otherwise, uh, I would argue, like, which one do you think is your favorite? I think mine is the, um, I, I, you know what, at first I thought it was going to be this one because of all the bright colors. And then I thought when I made this one, I was like, oh, that one's my new favorite. But really, I like the simplicity of that watermelon. So leave me a comment below. Tell me which one you think is your favorite. And um, I'll, uh, I'll see if there's a consensus. Thanks and bye.